Welcome to the one within all back to Interverse. I'm your host, Chance, and I never get tired of giving that opening line, the one within all, because it's always good to remind ourselves that we're embedded inside a unified field of conscious energy that is essentially limitless. This etheric soup we swim in is simultaneously the medium through which all motion travels and also the singularity at the heart of every pixel in our reality picture. Somehow it's easy to forget that our infinite highest imperial self has organized its existence into unique compartments of mind and body in order to experience sublime synchronicity, syntactic subjectivity, never-ending novelty, and conscious creativity. But when we do remember this core truth, we are taking a more mindful path through the gardens of our mind. And we become empowered through this heightened ability to pay attention so that we can pass through the poison ivy and find our favorite flora instead. There are many ways that someone might come into this type of an awakening process in their life. And our returning guest today teaches people some of the most effective ways he's found to cultivate mindfulness and filter the signal from within ourselves out from the noise of the exterior world. His name is Paul Linda, and we spoke quite a long time ago on Interverse about his book, How to Create a Consciousness Shift, an excellent and instructional read that I'll make sure to link in the show notes for you to check out if you haven't yet. Paul is a guide and educator on the leading edge of evolutionary potentials, and he offers holistic coaching workshops and online courses to help people expand and understand their truest self. Paul is also the founder and director of Shift, the Uplift Guide, and he's an author on several sites like Wake Up World, and he has his own website that you can visit for a hub of all things, Paul Linda at evolvingmandala.com, also linked in the show notes. Paul is currently located in Laos, and he has been there for several months. And when we decided to do this chat, we realized we had quite a lot of things to catch up on. And the overall goal of this conversation is to bring you up to a higher level of inspired flow like the one Paul's been operating on while providing insights and techniques to generate more overall mindfulness in our daily lives. You can also support Interverse on Patreon, patreon.com slash Interverse, where you'll also find that linked in the show notes. For $5 a month, you will be able to get the second hour of this podcast and all the other expanded, extended episodes. And that's where all the good stuff's at. After we get warmed up in the first hour, we drop the best types of gnosis nuggets that we can come up with. And I'm sure this episode will be no different. So let's get on to it. Uh, we're here with the consciousness crusader and mindfulness mentor to many, the one and only Paul Linda. Thanks for coming back to the show, man. And good morning over there. We are 12 hours apart in time. It's great to be back, Chance. Happy Grand Rising. I like that too better than morning. You know, I talk about word magic all the time, but I forget about the morning thing. That's such an obvious one. It's kind of a little opposite, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how you been since we last talked, man? What's going on? Well, when we last talked, I believe I was still living in Washington State. And then not shortly thereafter, I decided to leave the country entirely. I ever since I got to Washington State, I felt I thought Washington State was going to be where I felt at home, at ease, where I was going to establish myself and my vision. However, things felt um, once I got there, I got clearer, and it didn't feel like that. And I felt that there was something coming, and uh, it was best for me to not be in that country when it was occurring. So. I felt I'd be more helpful to humanity outside of that collective group consciousness because uh, it's really difficult to uh, have a different perspective when you're so enmeshed within it, so close to it. So I decided to do some questioning to my higher self through regression hypnotherapy and also by using the I Ching and also with connecting with my higher self through meditation. And the answer was very clear. It says you have to go to where there is perpetual summer for at least a year or longer so that your energy field can stay in an expanded state. Because in a lot of places in America, you have in a lot of places in the world, you have a place where it becomes like a hibernation mode part of the year. So your energy field is very expanded when it's warm, but then when it gets cold, 
it has to contract and then it's it's difficult for you to be able to feel that sort of wide electromagnetic field because you need to contract it to just kind of like survive and get through it and my higher self told me that given what i'm gearing up towards i need to feel what it will be like to just have at least skip one of those cycles and sure enough it's been incredibly helpful for me and ever since i got to southeast asia i moved to thailand first i was there for about 6 7 months i think it was 7 and i was fascinated at how different the consciousness is there and you know for better or for worse but it gives you an outside perspective living outside of a place you've lived in basically your whole life and i i've traveled around the world before that but never more than 2 weeks at a time so really living and being surrounded by a very different kind of spirituality that dominates rather than in america it's dominated by like a christian philosophy but there it's dominated by a buddhist philosophy and it's really interesting to see the the dynamics between people and and how that also kind of reinforces you to want to also behave in a certain way so uh obviously the coroni came <laughs> let's call it the beer bug yeah w whatever they call it whether it's real or not you know but to avoid those uh, youtube censors we should use code words though and they're more fun <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I felt, okay, this is maybe another reason why I moved because then it ended up being like the entire world got shut down for the first time ever in history. And it seems like this massive psychological experiment to see how far people are willing to give away their sovereignty. And I connected with my higher self again. I did another hypnotherapy session, uh, thanks to my partner, who's a regression hypnotherapist. And the sign said, you need to go right now if you want to continue feeling free. And sure enough, we were, a, we were the last two people to get visas into Laos, this tiny little country that most people never heard of. And we got there right before they closed the, the borders, same day, on March 21st on the equinox. And um, that's about my birthday, too. That's interesting time. Man, what a cool shift. Con continue. I'm just like marveling at this story. <laughs> this is amazing. And ever since then, I thought Thailand was foreign. Oh, Laos is like you're on another planet. This place. The consciousness, what I intuit is that the collective consciousness is still in a different stage of evolution. I'm not saying they're more primitive or more advanced, but it's definitely a different stage. And they, they, they are different. They, they behave differently. They have different uh, traditions that would definitely not make sense in, in America. But overall, very honest people, very kind people. And no one's trying to cheat you. They really do follow. Uh, the Buddhist principles and their traditional folk religions. And it feels kind of like a sanctuary away from the madness. Cause even though they locked down for like two or three weeks in March uh, or April, I mean, they, they went out really quick. You don't need to wear a mask. You don't need to, you know, do anything you don't want to do. And I don't even think most people even know what's going on in the rest of the world. That's how, cloistered it seems to be so really life is as normal as it could ever be uh, occasionally i'll go and um, wash some elephants or i'll go and go into waterfall river and continue to keep my energy field clean because even here there are some people who have fallen into the fear virus but Overall, I think it's a much easier game right now. And it has helped me to establish very ambitious visions that I have for the next five years, up to the 10 years. And so 
I'm really grateful that I followed my, my inner guidance, my inner being, my entire support team's being, because all of us have a really powerful support team behind us. And even though you can't see them with your regular perception, they're there. And if you meditate and you really get down to that silence, you can connect with them as well. So, yeah, I'm here for who knows how long. Uh, I guess I live here now. And I've been living in an Airbnb for seven months. And that's uh, great because you don't really have to do a lot of things you do when you have to rent a house. So it really hasn't been like an easier game here. And I have plans once the borders open to get out as soon as possible. And obviously, I don't know if you know this, but the audience doesn't. I'm traveling with my cats. I took two cats from America. And it's harder to take cats out of America into other countries than it is people. So that was a very laborious process. I wouldn't recommend someone doing it themselves unless they have a lot of time and are, have pay attention to detail and have a lot of money. Uh, so uh, as expensive as it was, um, I think it was worth it for us because in one of my few prior sessions ago in hypnotherapy, my higher self told me that my cats are my guides. and. Sure enough, it was because we wanted to originally move to Costa Rica, you know, all these like things that you normally want to think you are best for you. And really, it was like, nope, can't go to Costa Rica with your cats. And um, it was really helpful. It was like, okay, we're not supposed to be there. And sure enough, where we went was the best place for us. So we did, we did follow our guidance of our cats. At some point, that shifted. And then a higher self said, now you're the guides for the cats. So uh, yeah, we're now going to be moving soon again, and maybe even somewhere where there is a little bit of winter temporarily. And then we are moving to somewhere really incredible um, to start something, establish something very monumental to help the world. So that has been my journey in a nutshell for the past year. I don't know what part's my favorite. It might be the cat's part. I mean, when I've been in some higher states of consciousness, I felt strongly that my cats were running the show more than I was. And I was like, I can't prove it, but I think I'm on to you guys. <laughs> but yeah, there's so much in there. Um, I really want to talk about the guides and connecting with them. That sounds like a kind of a cool place to go because I had a guest on a few months back named Corinne, Corinne Wilson, aka Occult Priestess on YouTube. And she actually She's a psychic, I suppose, because otherwise, how would she have done this? She actually saw one of my guides during the podcast behind me and described what they looked like and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, yep, that's one that I'm already aware of. So that's amazing that it was perceivable to another person. And I'm sure that, you know, that the basic answer is, well, mindfulness practices, yo. But what <laughs> what are some ways that you found useful for connecting with guides? I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking about parts of ourselves, so we're never disconnected from it in, in any way, shape, or form. But how do we meet these other characters and archetypes within ourselves? And you know, is it <laughs> is it something that happens automatically whenever you're on your right way, or are there some actual techniques and tricks that you can pick up? There's always techniques and tricks that you can help uh, make it a more easier connection and transmission. So. First of all, you need to get into the receptive mode. And to get into the receptive mode requires you first to get past the initial phase where you have all these distracting thoughts that are all the noise that's getting in way of the signal that is attempted to be transmitted to you. So that could be very hard. You know, sometimes I will meditate for 20 minutes and that won't be enough. It's just too much of that noise still. So you can use your breath, which is a very powerful tool, and do various kinds of breathing um, techniques, such as a four-part breath, which is a square breath. You breathe in for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, and then 
you wait again for four seconds and you repeat this and you count the numbers in your head. Or you can also do the four, seven, eight breath, which is you breathe in for four seconds, you hold it for seven seconds, and then you breathe out for eight seconds. And that'll readjust your central nervous system, help you get a little calmer in your body. And also you can be breathing in using a mantra and then breathing out using a mantra like breathing in, conscious breathing, breathing out is my anchor, or breathing in, I am, and then breathe out and then mention a word that you are, that you want to embody that energy of. Various techniques like that. And that can help also meditation music, something ambient, uh, ambient noise or instrumental background meditation music helps. There's an app called Insight Timer on the iPhone that you can play within the app various meditation, ambient meditation tracks. And that could also get your mind more focused on the sound rather than your mind is, it, is everything's completely quiet and then your thoughts just start racing even more. So those are just a few. And when you, you do meditate longer, it also becomes easier because at a certain point, the thoughts stop being that distracting. You get calmer. You get into an alpha brainwave state for real. And that is when you can really just fall into this space of pure awareness. You feel like you're like in a void and all you are is just like this energy that has no bounds. And that in that pure state of pure awareness, you can feel almost like you're on a psychedelic experience. And that is when you can receive the messages. So I, I receive a lot of messages in that state. Sometimes I can get into it very quickly, depending on what my day was like. And sometimes it takes a little longer. And if you do have time, then you can hopefully spend time to get into it. So I, I have met several guides at this point. It's probably close to a baker's dozen. And sometimes the, you, you kind of feel that you're not making it up because it just happens out of the blue. You're not uh, attempting to conjure up like something. And I, you know, one time, for example, I, I sensed these beings or I saw them with my behind me. Uh, they're like three times as tall as I am. Blue being, black being, wearing gold, both wearing gold you know, accents and ancient Egyptian kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, this is completely out of the blue. And then another time I'm above the earth and there's hundreds of beings in a circle sitting in meditation around the entire planet. But one of them was my guide and they had this, they're, they're like this kaleidoscopic crystal and luminescent kind of being similar to what Ariel creates. But the head was like, a third of the size of their body, like really long. And you connect with really th things that you don't expect. So, and also another way is that it is, there is a potential for beings to connect with you that aren't your guides, but you, you need to, if you're unsure, if something feels unfamiliar or weird, then you should just, test them and ensure that they are of pure positive light, pure positive intention, and that they reveal themselves as to who they are. Because you do have imposters sometimes, little trickster beings and whatnot. Because for example, that, that's more of an issue if you're like, I want to connect with Archangel Michael. And then someone comes in like, yeah, I'm Archangel Michael, what's up? And it's like, you're not, you know, you probably aren't, but I liken it to an experience a lot of people maybe had. If you're at, say you're at like a music festival and you're looking for magic mushrooms and you go around asking people for them, you will probably get handed something bunk that doesn't even do anything. And if you are just like, okay, I'm open to that experience and I'd like to have it. And if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. Then it's going to just like show up in the, any experiences this way. It's like, you get taken advantage of mo most easily when you decide you need something and you're seeking it 
And that's kind of the paradox of seeking enlightenment even. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, more like tuning into something deep inside you that's already there than it is like finding something or needing something. It, you obviously already have it within otherwise, like, and you don't need it per se, it's already activated. Like this is already the, we're already in the ascended timeline. Like this is heaven that we're in right now, so to speak. Every, you know, there's like nowhere to go where this is it. This is the, this is the place to be. And we have to remember that overall. And, but yeah, I love what you're describing about how you, all the, the things that you've run into. I've seen some interesting uh, entities myself and, you know, th these are best, best tested by just literally asking him the question of, uh, are you of the highest and greatest good and intention or whatever, just like phrase the question in some way along those lines. And, uh, if you're rooted in the fact that, you know, all is self and everything is an extension of the, the one universal mind that you're also within, then you basically have a type of spiritual authority in that position where they can't lie to you about what they are, or they will generate some, karmic blowback that's even is a lot more rapid in the spiritual or the astral than it is than the, the physical uh, karmic blowback is. So they typically, I would say pretty much always, they're just going to like, you're going to have an in intuition or a sense of what it is you're encountering. If you ask the question fearlessly and with the no knowledge that like it has to tell you <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. And to go back to where you're talking about the, that it's already the, power and authority is within us. Well, I think it's also important to remember that, and I realized this a while ago too, that your, your higher self isn't somewhere higher than you. It's not like spatially like that. It's already within you. I saw this one time where the higher self was within me, like kind of like just like right, like transposed over my being and maybe just like slightly behind the the front of me and it was like okay yeah like that makes sense it's like it's like it's in another dimension perhaps part of it but it's still spatially me like it's it's all here and i can i can just see myself as just dimensionally within the same space but just stretched out through through dimensions now that's what it means to be in a holographic universe is that every point is the middle right exactly and the, the nature of the universe, there's a lot of good evidence that shows that it is holographic. And that's also why instead of using the term timeline, I use time fractal because I think it's every time is more like a spiral fractal to me. So fractal time spirals makes more sense. Timelines makes it seems like there's a um, past, present and future. But the past, present, and future is happening all at once at the same time. And everything that's happening is affecting everything else, spinning off new fractals of the possibility and experience. And so you can even, from where you are right now, change the past and then also change the future. So I've done work where I kind of like how ancestral work is done, you can say, and like heal to the past of my lineage and healed the past of other things that I, I'm able to and also remember the future, so to speak, and set intentions down, set blueprints down for new realities that I believe are best for my personal experience of reality. Man, that's a really important skill set, actually, like changing the past is as simple as reframing your opinion about yourself in relation to the past event. Like you don't actually have to step in a doctor who TARDIS and go back to back in time and avoid the co the copy of yourself and avoid the universe imploding because you ran into your own double. <laughs> actually it's like whenever you've been in these hard times, if you ever remember a hard time that you had where it felt like there was, something there that helped you get through it. I mean, not everyone maybe has had this experience, but a lot of people have where they just, so, I mean, sometimes people go through really horrific stuff and they, they have this deeper strength that they tap into and access. And I think that a lot of times you could look at that as being a different version, a different part of the time fractal self, looking back on that incident compassionately and sending energy through, because energy flows where attention is directed. 
So you're sent, you're putting your attention on this part of the time fractal that you were in and you're there now because it's all it's all one and it's all now. And so you're actually literally changing the energetic signature of that event by reshaping your view of that event to be more loving basically. You know, the the way to do it in the simplest terms is to just you can journal about things that happened to you and uh, that were difficult or about anything in your life, even something that happened yesterday. Just write down what happened uh, from the point of view of an omniscient narrator, right? Like we all remember omniscient narrators when we're learning about <laughs> narratives in, in class. That's the type that knows everything. And that omniscient narrator should have the view that they love the main character, which is you unconditionally and even forgive the mistakes and point out the learning opportunities that occur because of mistakes. And anyway, it's just that easy as like you rewrite your own story from the perspective of an omniscient, loving and forgiving narrator. And that's it. You change the energetic signature of something and that something had an energetic signature within your body if it was something that was stuck or festering or blocked, blocked up. So you have now freed up energetic blockages in your physical body just by changing and healing your perspective about something that happened in the past. And that's like a uh, simple time travel. That's consciousness tra time travel. That's the real deal. I've talked about this before, but you can literally do this just as much as you could have a, a medium that connects with deceased ancestors. Uh, this is all very possible in the power of our mind as a vehicle like the imagination is a portal that can take you anywhere it's not like this abstract ephemeral pointless silly fluffy add-on to the human machine it's like the main operating system is the imagination every type of thinking all thoughts are forms of imagining imagining is not a form of thought it's the core so once like really at the end of the day mindfulness is something that's helping you connect into imagination as a perceptual mechanism and something you can use in a two-sided way as a tool for creating and changing things and as a tool for sensitivity and consciousness of what is. And it's like this amazing deepest part of what all other senses are based on. Right, exactly. And I would also say that this sort of time travel work can also be used for healing the inner child. I, th I think a lot of people have trauma to varying degrees uh, I think everybody, ch every child is traumatized in some way, even if it's just like being left at home for a day and feeling like they got abandoned. And so you can do this sort of technique to heal your inner child, connect, uh, like literally see it at different ages from like being an infant to being like five years old, nine years old and so on. And just giving it a hug and telling it that everything is okay. I love you. And just, just doing your, your standard inner child work. And you can really actually heal that. And not only that, but like you said, with the emotions, the emotions can get trapped in your body from traumatic experiences. And even, especially if you resist things when you bypass certain emotions. And then you can help release those emotions with either magnets or a combination of magnets and doing this sort of time travel healing work. Magnets, that's interesting because I've been working with tuning forks a lot lately and I've found that to be a super powerful modality. The last time I used them, I actually combined the tuning forks and used them as a way to base my own voice off of and did some toning with my own voice too because I can get louder than the forks, but they're very interesting. There's definitely something magnetic going on with sound. I feel that electromagnetism and um, sonic vibrations are like two sides of the same coin the way there's the thunder and then there's the crack flash of lightning but it's actually the same phenomenon i think something very similar is going on when it comes to sound and magnetism and electricity like with the last tuning session i did for somebody the parts of the bio they're laying there with their eyes closed they don't even know where i'm at they're kind of out of it actually so relaxed pretty much in a trance and the parts of their field i was working in that side of the body, that part of the body would just have random twitches and jerks happening, even though I wasn't even physically touching them anywhere. So you can start to find this anatomy of your own energetic field and utilize that. And 
And uh, <laughs> like you could help other people quite a bit with this type of knowledge. And it's funny how simple it all turns out to be when it comes to like what really keeps us well, what keeps us alive and lively is a lot easier to understand than what the mainstream medical system wants you to believe about how complicated health is and all that. And, and yeah, I mean, if you crack one of these things open, the body is very complicated. It's got everything in there. It's the alchemical cabinet. But when it comes to the real vitality that animates us, it's just this charge and discharge factor that we need to learn how to manage and safely handle some of the voltages we're, we're getting into, you know, okay. So I want to address this real quick. Like how, how has it been to be in the summer summery land? I mean, you kind of touched on it, but that idea, I mean, it was amazing when you're telling your story at the beginning, that idea that you needed to be somewhere that's perpetual summer for at least a year. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I actually, I took some damage out here in, in the US of A this year, like not getting to exercise as much. My routines crumbled because like, I can't go to a gym without a diaper on my face or whatever. And I'm not going to, I, I refuse to play the game. I don't care what anyone thinks of that. Like I'm not playing that game and um, I'm not, I'm not accessing that symbol. I'm not accepting that symbolic thing. And you know, that's caused me some friction. I'm pretty chill. So I haven't had like terrible friction. I'm sure other people have had, have caused themselves a lot of problems by not believing that they should wear one of those things and get themselves into arguments. And, you know, I can be chill and respectful. I'm kind of like a ninja when I go through places without it and it doesn't really come up. But my point is there's been all kinds of reasons and, and like, and uh, negative vibes in the general field out here and, uh, it's not even felt like a normal summer because there's been so such a lack of coming together of uh, groups of people that is normally a hallmark of the nicer months, you know. So anyway, like, how, how has it been to keep that charge strong? I guess is my question. <laughs> well, there's ever since ancient times, there has been a story about the summer land, what's called the summer land, this land of perpetual summer that is in a non-physical plane of reality. And to get to it, you need to travel beyond the astral plane, beyond all like the, the weird critters that live there. And it's almost like a paradisical place. And it just seems just like pure summer, just like whatever your rendition perception of summer is, it's, it's like that. And that is seems to be like an installed component of the, the tapestry of reality. So it makes sense that the ideal here on earth would also be that similar kind of idyllic state where you're not uh, expanding and contracting in that sort of way. I think expansion and contraction can be very helpful as a tool, but there's also a time where it can cause more harm than good depending on what you're doing. So, for example, I was in Vermont and living there for a while. I even bought land and it was half a year of winter or half a year of contraction. And really the summer, quote unquote, summer part was three months. So I felt that was really uh, debilitating for me. But then once I moved here, it's been, I feel this past year, especially since I moved to Laos, I've had more development of my strengthening of my fields really strong field now compared to what it was in America. And it's dif more difficult for interference, hyperdimensional interference to come into my reality. It's easier for me to get into the receptive mode, into a flow state. It's easier for me to have success with essentially anything I do, no matter how small or great it can be. And it has really given me more energy overall to do the ambitious things I want to do and also to respond to the collective during this time of great fear, anger, and sadness in a way that I can help it. Because I, I recently I wrote an article on practicing Tonglen meditation to help ease the suffering of humanity. But it's very difficult for people to do that when one in four young people in America are contemplating suicide. So how can they be sending out compassion, 
you know, in a, in a true way because they really actually feel it when they don't, don't actually feel it because they themselves are suffering. So I feel someone like me is getting a lot of advantages being here to be able to do that sort of work in this time of crisis for people. And so it's been very helpful for me in all those ways. Well, I'd love to hear about that article and what that type of meditation entails. That sounds interesting. And maybe more about what you've done to be there for people in these very troubled times. And uh, th yeah, this, and also let's talk about hyperdimensional interference. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Because that's a very interesting way of putting things. Ultimately, my main response to all of what you said, though, that I just want to say is like the real hack, the real biohacking, the real life hack is knowing that health is wealth. And this formula that you can understand of your charge, your personal charge actually doesn't just dictate how much energy you have to do this or that, or whether or not you have the energetic throughput to finish a task. It actually influences the amount of synchronicity you experience in your life and the amount of people at the right time in the right place, opportunities just showing up or falling into your lap or manifesting as I guess the simple word that is the catch all term manifesting. It's not about thinking hard enough or wishing for something hard enough. It has a lot to do with your personal bio energy and the influence it's able to have on the rest of the fractal or not or lack thereof. But anyway, yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, just a really quick aside before we get into that. So something we were talking about earlier with the time travel, uh, I would just recommend two books for people. One book about how sound can be healing and toning. It's called Sacred Sounds by Ted Andrews, a phenomenal book, lots of practical practices involved that he provides you. And then also for healing with magnets, healing trapped emotions is The Emotion Code by Dr. So I just wanted to throw that in for your audience. You kind of crackled a little bit. Dr. Who? Dr. Bradley Nelson. All right. I took notes of those and they'll be in the show notes for sure. And I'm interested, especially in sacred sounds, because like I said, I'm I'm playing around with biofield tuning and I know our voices are the most powerful thing that there is as far as doing biofield tuning and the forks are just like training wheels, although they're fun. Yeah. And also, I guess one more aside is with the sacred sounds. The uh, author recommends getting a pitch pipe to harmonize your chakras, getting them, them into their, their true resonance and so that they're fully aligned. And a little pitch pipe is, gets you into the, uh, every, there's seven, there's seven notes, right? E, A, D, G, B, F, I believe. And you basically play the sound and it tones. You actually hear like the, the tone, the, the singular tone within your, your mind and it's creating a alignment for your, your seven primary energy centers. It's a very inexpensive uh, thing to get. And it's a, like a quick tune up that you can do every day. You know, this is just a totally off topic thing, but we, and we'll get into that meditation and hyperdimensional interference question. But have you heard of the idea that there could be more than seven tones and that actually we're, we've been, we've had them obscured from us, the other two, if you will, like that, the colors aren't just the seven colors of the rainbow, but there's white and black There's a possible way of looking at it. There's nine integers. And when you even uh, put letters to numbers, the ninth letter is the I, the self. And nine is continued or continu continually called the number of the self, if you will, because if you multiply a number by nine, you get a result that those digits add together to get nine. And if you add nine to anything, whatever result you get from that, the sum of those digits will sum together to form the original number. So nine has these weird properties of the self. And anyway, I've seen a couple of videos of people seemingly performing a do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, but then with two more notes thrown in that I haven't been able to imitate. But I don't know. It seems like a really interesting concept. Have you heard anything about this? Kind of out of left field, I know. In specific terms to that, no, but I'll tell you my experience is that the, when I can see 
my energy body, it looks like a, a toroidal field. And that's going back to vortex based mathematics that is based on the number nine. And the, the end result, when uh, I think it's Dean Roden, I forgot his name, but the person Dean who came Raiden. up with vortex based mathematics. No, did Dean Roden come up with that? No, I don't think he did actually. I think it was Mark Roden. And yeah, it's like it creates a vortex, a, a torus. And I, I noticed that, yes, there's seven primary energy centers in the body, um, in the central channel. There's obviously secondary and tertiary energy channels and the meridian system with its 144,000 um, meridians, 72 on each side, 72,000 on each side. Those channels go through all these other chakras or, or energy centers but there seems to be an energy center up here above the the physical head within the energy body and then there also seems to be an energy center below kind of like infrared and ultraviolet and so that's what i've seen from my personal experience and that could be the white and the black again because like the bottom of the feminine and the top of the masculine or other way around you know what i mean like the because the, the upper chakras are sort of the um the feminine colors but oddly enough you're also going up into the more cosmic and ethereal theoretical spiritual dimensions so there's always this interesting symmetry and mirroring and one description i've heard for the one that's above the head is the halo chakra which i think is a cool one the way that i like to understand it is sort of like divine protection or spiritual armor that maybe Christians would call it. And it has, it's a super simple type of magic in a way. It's like, if you remember that you're always going to be in the right place at the right time for your highest and greatest good, because this is the life you chose to do exactly what you're here to do, then it's essentially like, you know, you're safe. So you feel protected, if that makes sense. I mean, you, there's no safety guaranteed in reality, but challenges are always a re direct result of what is necessary and the obstacles are the course as be, as you might say. And so that's how I look at the halo chakra. It's like, if you remember that you have spiritual protection in a sync, like in that you're going to be led in synchronicity, that's um, all you need to do. And it's activated <laughs> and it was always activated, but you weren't looking for it before. So you need to, if you want it to feel like synchronicity, you need to be looking for it. And that's what it means to like, know it's there know that your halo chakra is activated, that it's like the quarter, it's like the football coach that's at the top of the bleachers that's got a radio to call the quarterback plays down and he can see from all above. And you're just listening to that sort of uh, still small voice, whatever form it comes, even if it's a guide or if it's your actual, in, your own inner monologue, whatever the case may be, you're like quieting your thoughts with mindfulness to be able to listen to that. And that's what leads you to notice the synchronicity because you're going to notice the inner outer reflection like oh i just thought about that and now this happened as opposed to just sort of you know going through the day in a flutter of all the, the random thoughts without noticing how they connect and that's really what mindfulness is it's not like something that isn't already there it's like now you're noticing that actually these two things are very deeply connected the thoughts and reality yes exactly and, and people also, they, when they're more aware that synchronicities, synchronicities exist, what a mouth jumble, uh, the more that they are going to be aware of them because our higher self, uh, our entire team, uh, the, the source itself, there's all, always messages being given and kind of like help in the way that they can without uh, breaking any sort of cosmic laws per se. So when you when you listen and you are more aware of those synchronicities, and they come in many different ways, people usually just think about number synchronicities, but there's a lot of different kinds. And then you can get more guidance that you're not getting from when you're in your ego minds, which is most of the time. So it's very helpful and it's also helpful to discern false synchronicities because synthetic synchronicities also exist so as long if they if they just seem very out of the blue or they, they come and the situation still just doesn't feel good to you you know chances are it, it could not necessarily be an authentic synchronicities 
synchronicity. And I actually wrote an article a few months back about how to differentiate between true and false synchronicities that we can also put down in the show notes. I don't remember if we talked about that way back when we talked the first time, or if I just remember reading that article, or if it was in your first book to any degree. But that's an interesting idea. I, mean, I never, never talked about it before. Really? Maybe I'm just in my just in that article. Maybe I saw it, or I mean, I feel like I've been familiar with this idea for a while because to me, it's like if there are sort of guide entities that are there to like arrange things for you in the right way on the fly based on your free will choices. It seems like the opposite would be true as well. That entities that were like more trickstery, uh, really the way I understand the trickster entities is it's like, it's like this. If you have parts of yourself that are split off and compartmentalized and like kept in a dark closet, like the unwanted stepchild, then they actually become free agents in your psyche and can work in your external world to a, they work on the behalf of your higher self, your superior self, actually, to make you notice them. And then sometimes that means they have to cause certain levels of havoc before they're noticed because you're that dense in terms of whatever the thing is, or you've really pushed it aside. And so it's not like people need to be scared of, oh, there's these uh, devils and demons out there that are ready to jump on uh, in my body and possess me. Not, you can't, nothing can possess you that you don't let in. And if, Something, if you are possessed by something, it's your own energetic pattern in a loop, in a sense. But anyway, there's we're getting close to the end of hour one. We've probably got like 15 minutes left, maybe 12 minutes actually. But I wanted to, before we kind of wrap that up, I wanted to give you a chance to anything that you wanted to be in the free hour about what you're doing right now, how you're working with people that you might want to promote or explain to the audience. That'd be great. And then we can kind of continue on this road that we've started in with the uh, synthetic synchronicities, hyperdimensional interference, because I'm sure you've got thoughts on that. If you would just want to go there, that's fine yeah. too. Well, I think it, it'll take some time to talk about that. And then uh, that'll also tie into the uh, artificial synthetic AI transhumanist hive mind direction that is being pushed and also the organic conscious evolution, super mental transformation path that I believe humanity is best suited to take. So that's like a, a major topic that we can get into. So I would say we'll leave that for then. And for now, uh, I, would, I would like to share something new that I've come up with a few months ago called Uplift Guide, upliftguide.com, because I noticed there's just so much negativity, so much anger and, and hostility and fear-based content, whether it's real or not, being pushed into the collective psyche right now. And especially now that America is having a quote unquote election selection and it's, it's so high and people are already dealing with a lot of things and it's, it's too overwhelming. And I believe this is a distorted perception of reality. So I started doing something that I, I can do at least, you know, in a little way where I'm sharing uplifting, positive, amazing, really incredible paradigm shifting. Uh, events and news stories that are happening that can help make a little more of a balance between all the the, the fear and the neg lower energies that are being promoted within the collective psyche. And beyond that, I'm also I have a website called Evolving Mandala, which is based on the work I do. And I recently finished a course called Reality Alchemy, where I teach people how to literally change, shape, and transform their reality. And that also goes into uh, shifting into parallel realities that are the reality that you would like to be experiencing for yourself. And there's various ways to do that. And that, that's something that I think could be very helpful for people at this time. And when there's all this talk about quote unquote timeline jumping and, and, um, times of transition and bifurcation of parallel realities, people are starting to diverge into different experiences of reality. And these techniques that I, I talk about are able to help to tether you to the best possible experience of reality that you can. And 
they really help empower people. So that's also something I do. And I also provide uh, conscious writing and editing work for people as well. I've written around 2000 articles, seven books so far, and it's only Monday. But uh, I, I also offer some soulful web design if other people who are conscious creators want to put themselves out there and help themselves become more noticed and have a beautiful way to do that for their services. And I still am running Shift, which is something I started in 2012 and focused on personal evolution, healthy eating, healthy living, conscious evolution, collective evolution. And I have some very major projects that I've been devoting a lot of my time to that involve a lot of working parts, moving parts. So more on that at another time. But for now, the, that's, that's where I'm at. And if anybody's interested, they can check any of those out. Man, that's awesome. You've, you've been busy, dude. <laughs> but I'm sure that you take plenty of time to slow down and not actually be in the loop of being busy. So I didn't mean to like, you know, cast that spell at you. You're busy, <laughs> but like you've been, you have been productive, which is a natural thing for humans to do. Humans, I think, unburdened will soar. It's just part of our nature. And you're an example of that. Been doing it since at least 2012 or longer. And I've really appreciated knowing you and in our interactions online and stuff. It's been cool to have you in the Discord chat. If you guys haven't joined the Discord, you should because... Awesome people like Paul are in there and you can just tag him with a, a comment or a question and, you know, he's available for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anything, anytime. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but really, we're we're an awesome tribe in there and it's been fun to have that going on. And uh, so where do you want to go with our last couple of five minutes? Do you have any closing thoughts on any of the topics of the the first hour? <laughs> Yeah, I would say in these times of tremendous challenges and changes, uh, to take time out of your day every day, as, as just like you take time to eat and drink, to tune in with yourself, tune in with your inner being, and get still, get, get centered, get connected with the higher dimensional information that can help you from your entire team because it's difficult to have clarity and we're within this soup right now that's so discordant and imbalanced. And that can really help you navigate as we progress through the rest of this 2020 vision year and into 2021. And hopefully we'll all come out of it on the other side in a world that's a little fairer, a little more balanced, and filled with a little more stability. Yeah, 2020 has been really interesting for sure. And uh, like I said before, the obstacles are the course. And if getting out of our comfort zones this year has been something that we wish didn't happen, at a certain point, we'll look back on this year and go, I'm glad this, that, and the other thing happened that helped me. Uh, motivated me to shift, showed me what was not working for myself. And we have all of the power to change our own reality into the one that we want to create. And it's as simple as becoming aware of what is what it is that's tethering you to the stuff that you don't want. And it's done by checking in with self, the mindfulness practices. That's what checking in with the the team is really all about. And it's it's like also to go back to the conversation of charge being important, doing that is actually something that is going to build up your charge. It's as easy as just adding some relaxation into your routine that's conscious, mindful relaxation. That's, you know, body relaxation practices, stuff like that. Whatever it is you're doing, that's like metaphorically money in the bank. It's energy in the reservoir. It's current that will also represent your current C. <laughs> it's your... Your current currency and your current, they go hand in hand. And it's so, I mean, not just your money, but your spiritual money of it is attention. That's your spiritual currency. So attention building practices are naturally going to reflect in a better access to 
energy of all forms in the external reality. And I think that's probably something we could just like never highlight enough because you're human like I am. You have to actually make yourself do it even when you're in a good place, right? It's not like, okay, I, I'm I'm doing well. Now I can just ditch all these things that got me to where I'm going. That's always the yo-yo effect that is easy to fall into. And it's cool to have people like you that can show the the immediate the immediate and long-term results of the type of mindsets that you you teach that in your own life you're an example for that your your vibe and your aura is strong and i'm definitely absorbing those uh good good grand rising vibes from you over there in laos today been an awesome first hour yeah thanks for having me on again and letting me share all that information for people because this is this is probably the most cool juncture of humanity that we have ever been at. And it may seem like we're going through intense darkness right now, but it's always darkest before the dawn and there will be a new dawn. Interesting that you say that. That's very interesting. Uh, I, I would love to talk about this bifurcation in the second hour, transhuman path versus organic path. And, you know, the synchronicity conversation when it's positive or negative in a sense or useful, not useful. And maybe even to get into a, an article that you wrote about how to maintain mindfulness during sleep. And if we have time, I want to get into talking some I Ching too. So that's a lot to try to stuff in a second hour, but that's what you guys can look forward to if you sign up on Patreon and join Interverse Plus. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Thanks, Paul, for this amazing first hour. It's been super fun and we'll definitely be doing it again. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Well, thanks for sticking around to the end of this phenomenal episode with Paul and uh, check out evolvingmandala.com. The show notes will have links to everything that you can find Paul doing online and there's quite a lot of it. So <laughs> check him out, show him some love on social media. Tom, thanks for sharing himself in this episode because he had some really great perspectives for us. And I'm just glad that we can capture these type of conversations. And yeah, and I mean, this one speaks for itself. <laughs> it was a complicated set of issues that we were diving into, especially in the plus extension when we started talking about the whole transhumanism thing versus the organic potential of humanity to transcend to much higher levels of like spiritual superpowers, apparently like becoming the X-Men, but yourself being all the X-Men in one. <laughs> So that's always a fun conversation. Do we want to try to do that with technology that's controlled by some like corporation that has the keys to whether or not your new duped up body works? Or do you want to just like control the hologram of your physical self in some crazy like Neo from the Matrix way? Anyway, these conversations are always some of my favorites. And I actually ran into something neat that I recommend to you guys if you're interested in this type of like thought experiment of humanity's deepest potential. Uh, check out this game called Nocturne. It is uh, only prelude is out, I guess, like chapter one. So it's not fully out, but it's free. If you have Steam, you can go find out on Steam and I'll link it in the show notes. But it's this like old school looking uh, graphically type of game that's really fun. It has like a, a rhythm style system of gameplay, like Guitar Hero or something, but with a keyboard. So music is a big part of the game, but the story is this crazy world where humanity went extinct, but uploaded their consciousness to uh, an afterlife simulator. <laughs> and I don't want to give away too much more than that. Just go check it out. It, there's some really deep philosophical questions and cool characters and I'm looking forward to when that fully comes out. So anyway, I, I was just playing that earlier today and thought, you know what? This really applies to what I was talking about with Paul and so I thought I should tell you guys about it. Maybe you'll like it. Anyway, uh, if you want to get the plus extension and you don't know how to do that, you're new to the show or something, or you just don't usually listen this far into the show, whatever. <laughs> uh, you, all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash interverse. Also link to the show notes and it's only $5 and you get access to the second hour of this conversation and all the other ones. And we do some other interesting perks on Patreon like a little bit later tonight, I'm going to be recording a group chat with the uh, multiverse tier of support, which is a higher level tier of support. 
on Patreon than the basic five dollars a month that gets you the episode extensions. But uh, this is like a group podcast with some of the biggest supporters of the show, so it's always fun to have that monthly conversation like we do. And plus, members, just regular supporters, will still be able to hear that conversation. But if you want to jump in the mix and talk with us about whatever things that we get up to in our monthly chat, then yeah, see if you might be able to upgrade your support tier and I would be happy to bring in there. I have to kind of gate it that way with a higher level of support just because otherwise there'd be too many people uh, right away trying to do it. So, you know, we wouldn't all be able to talk very much if there was a bunch of us in there. So at some point I might even cap the amount of people that are allowed to be in that tier. For now, I'm not going to because it's hard to tell what that number should be since not everyone's going to be able to make it every month anyway. But yeah, it's probably going to stay a relatively small group. So if that sounds like fun or you hear the multiverse chat that comes out in a couple of days before you heard this or something and it was cool, then yeah, maybe consider jumping in the mix with the higher pledge. But it's all good. There's a lot of free ways you can help out the show too. If you like what I do and the people I talk to and you think I should do more of it and do a better job, then supporting me would be great. So one way to do that would be to get on iTunes and do a review. So I'll read you a recent review that was really good. There was a bunch all at once, but I only really feel like reading one right now. So <laughs> thank you to everybody who posted one up. I might read some more of these newer ones later, but hopefully there's a couple of you out there that hear this part and think, oh yeah, I could go leave a free review. Five star review helps new people find the show. So it's really cool if you do it. Anyway, this one came from earlier in August. And it says, Chance, while humble, is often as deft and insightful as his guests, giving them room to share, yet perfectly positioning his own thoughtful observations to stoke a perfect intensity of pure intellectual fire. Drawing on a love of language, truth, and our right to question reality, the eclectic world of the universe is sure to stimulate a syncretic lensing that adds holistic perception to one's physical, mental, and emotional toolkit. Much gratitude and grace to this authentic expression. May we all learn to mine the riches of the world within. Wholeness. Man, that is a really nice review. Wow, that's the coolest thing Like you could have wrote. I mean, someone could write something equally that amazing, but I don't know if you can top it. That was great. But thanks. Uh, good to know that that's the type of quality person is out there listening to the show. Is exactly who I make it for. I mean... I wouldn't mind if what we talked about had mass appeal, but I like accept that it doesn't necessarily have mass appeal <laughs> yet, but we'll see. Maybe we'll get there. I'm not going to limit us with thinking it's impossible, but the point is being that there's not mass appeal to this type of holistic thinking, interverse type thinking, whatever that is, you know, the vibe that came off of that <laughs> review, <laughs> uh, that we all are like basically omnificent creator beings, I guess. Omnificent meaning they have all creative powers. It's like being omniscient, omnificent. Anyway, that's what we are. That is true. And until that gets mainstream, that means I'll need the people that do vibe with the message to like pick up the support slack and uh, help me out <laughs> by joining on Patreon. I know I already asked, but dang, it would really help. Um, yeah, because, you know, it wouldn't take that many more people to have me fully supported. And then I could do this as like a full time gig. And man, I'd do so much better of a job if I didn't have another job. Promise. Not asking you to get me out of your, get me out of my, you know, day job that I don't want to be in while you're still trying to get yourself out of it. But the thing is, it's only $5 a month and it just takes a lot of you doing it. It doesn't take that much from any one of you. So. You know, I I like to uh, also share the love with other people by supporting them, the more support I get. So it's like a big circle of life. If we're all supporting each other and not corporations as much, uh, big corporations that is, I think we would find that things go more smoothly for humanity. But anyway, uh, you know, Plus is awesome. I think you'll love it if you do sign up. And I don't know if I have a whole lot else to talk about in this outro. I mean, I could always just talk. You know me, but I'm going to play us out with a song by my buddy, My Own Eyes, a song called The Zoid. Good stuff. And I will link that in the show notes, too. So have an awesome whatever time of the uh, existence it is right now, night, day, future, past. 
whatever let's uh let's do this again sometime come hang out with me on a future episode there'll be good things coming as there always are and i'll talk to you all soon much love bye bye